Bless me, welcome on one of the former stars at UMKC, and I was the newest Florida Gator, Brandon McKissick. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Well, we kind of were discussing this a little bit, but you made the big move now. You just left a really historic career out there at UMKC, and now you head out to Florida, Gainesville, for your final college year. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm, I'm excited, um, happy. Uh, I'm just ready to, you know, get out there with a, you know, a new squad, you know, and just get ready to work, you know, and get better. Now, we're going to get into Florida a lot more towards the end of this, but I kind of want Florida Gator fans to get to know you a little better because – you have a pretty crazy story that's got you to this point. So let's head all the way back. You're originally out from Ferguson, Missouri. What was it like growing up out there? Uh, you know, Ferguson, Missouri, for you know, a lot mo- majority of my life was quiet until everything happened with uh Michael Brown, and then things started getting a little loud and rambunctious. But you know, my parents, you know, they worked really hard, you know, just to keep me out of that, all that out of the way. You know, I did a good job of just keeping my head down and just stay in the gym. And going to school, I went to school like 20 minutes away from my house, out the way. So like I was kind of out the area, honestly. Mm-hmm. But you know, I just I went to school, I worked out, did my school, and I, I just repeated it the cycle. So you know, I really wasn't really trying, you know, being you know, all those distractions, everything that was going on during that time. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, but other than that, I mean, like it, it's it's wild out there in St. Louis. You know, Ferguson, St. Louis, kind of the same thing. You know, but that's where I'm originally from is Ferguson. You know, it's inside of St. Louis. So, mm-hmm. but it you know you have your distractions, you have your trials and tribulations. You know, but it's all about how you you know you take them, how you move forward, and how you just keep trying to push through. You know, and then when you get an opportunity to make it out, you know, and do something special with your with your career or yourself, you know, you you take it. You know, that's what I did by going to Kansas City. You mentioned something key there, because obviously a lot of guys either come from backgrounds that are not always the easiest places to come from. And like you said, you obviously there's always that point in time where you choose which way you kind of want to go. And like you said, your parents really helped you to stay focused on basketball state. Obviously, you look at the other aspect of social justice and all that you still are a part of. But in terms of overall, just focusing more towards your career, that's something that you always yeah. stay focused on. Your parents help you with. How critical was it having them in your life to kind of help mold you and keep you on the right path? Uh, my parents were really critical and molded me into the right path and to the right person. Uh, they always held me accountable for everything that I did on and off the field, the court, the track. Like I, I was for a majority, almost two, three sport athlete, you know, most of the time until I really started taking basketball seriously and I couldn't really do any spring sports, but you know, like playing football and playing basketball, like everything that like, you know, like teen sports growing up teaches you and then having like parents that are like, like. I wouldn't say they were the strictest parents, but, you know, like they they, they made sure like they didn't let me just do whatever I want, you know. So it was they really helped me mold into the man I am. And, you know, even as the, my family members around me, you know, like they were ever so caring, you know, through all of this, you know, through my whole career as a as a player at, growing up. Like they were always so supportive and there for me. So, you know, I never wanted to just disappoint them or, you know, or, you know do anything to where they look at me differently. So I, I kind of just stayed in my lane and, you know, just focused on, you know, what was getting me to a better place. I also know that life as a, as a student athlete, because your mom was a softball player at the collegiate level and your dad was a wrestler at the collegiate level. How big was that for you? Kind of having two people that's gone through the whole recruiting process, that's gone through college, has played that level. How big was, was that for you in terms of just basketball? Uh, it was big on a sense, just know, like, to know, like, they know, like, what's going on, you know, like, kind of, like, what the idea is, you know, I was kind of naive to it, and my first recruitment process, me saying that now as a senior and went through my process again, I was kind of naive, and, you know, they kind of helped me in the ways they could, but, you know, it's different for different sports, so, like, they really just kind of just gave me advice on what they feel like I should do, you know, we, and going through all of that craziness of that recruitment process that I went through that a lot of people probably don't even know about, uh, you know, ended up at UMKC was the best for me, you know? So, yeah, it was, it was a crazy time, but, you know, having them there just kind of just keeping me stable and being my rock, you know, it kind of helped a lot. Mm-hmm. We do know that overall, that whole area out there, St. Louis is really where the majority of the talent does come from, but your old Missouri area is some talent comes out there. It's not necessarily one of the highest producing in terms of talent, but when guys do make it out of there, it's a lot of star power. Jason Tatum, we talk about him because you play against him a lot. Bradley Beal's from out there. Like, the list goes on. What's it yeah. like for the basketball atmosphere? Like, what's it like playing basketball out there? Uh, strictly St. Louis. I feel like St. Louis, uh, the talent level that we have and had in the past, 
mm-hmm. is really underrated. Like, you know, you, you, you say the Jason Tatum and you say Bradley Beal, mm-hmm. you look at guys like Ben McLemore, like those mm-hmm. guys, like those guys have made it there, you know, they're playing, you know, then you got guys like, you got, you got singles kids all over, you know, playing D one sports, you know, like it ain't, it ain't like we, like, I just feel like, I feel like we don't get enough credit, you know, like, I feel like personally, like St. Louis kids that play basketball, like we're cut from a different different cloth because we play each other every day. Like I played Jason for three years. And like that's not easy. That's not an easy job. You know, like that's not like, you know, and, you know, there are other great players in Jason's class that came out of St. Louis, like Tyler Cook, who's in the league now mm-hmm. and Snee, who's playing two like G League. And, you know, he's playing like, he went to K State. You know, you got a bunch of guys that did a lot of great things in college over the years that kind of came out of St. Louis, and like all of that was concentrated in the high school basketball. Really, in a sense, in the same conference because my conference was had uh, my school had CBC, mm-hmm. who brought kids out like Patrick McCall, Jordan Barnett, like guys like that. You had Shamanad, then you had a couple other schools that you know just like really just play hard basketball. So you know. Like we had a lot, a bunch of talent, you know, in, in like a certain concentrated area. So you know, playing those guys every day, growing up with those guys every day, it was just like it made us better, and you know, it made us a different type of player. Like honestly, in terms of the AAU aspect, I know you were running originally with what's called St. Louis Eagles. It's now a transition because Bradley Beal's kind of helped sponsor them and take them over to become Brad Beal Elite. But when you were out mm-hmm. there, like walk us through the AAU process. What was it like playing with them and? Also, just in terms of Brad Beal, I know he was a little bit of love your classic, I think a four or five year gap and whatnot. What was no, it like coming on the community? So Brad was like Jason's 17 year and my seven and my true 17 year. Brad was really involved with us and the teams. And you know, he was there, he was on the bench. You know, he would give he would talk to us, he would mentor us when we needed to. Like he was he he really focused on like, you know, making us better people on and off the court. You know, like he wanted, a, he wanted us to get a, a scholarship. Like that's all he was, he worried about getting us to the next level and getting us there. You know, and like, I really, and I do appreciate him for what, everything that he's done for me, everything he's done for my teammates, you know, like he's really done a lot, you know, as a mentor to help us get to where we are today. You know, I'm playing with guys like Jordan Goodwin, who's my cousin at SLU, mm-hmm. uh, Darius Garland, uh, Jericho Helms, you know, like guys like that, Jeremiah Tillman, like guys like, like, like it was, it, it was different for me from my high school because I didn't have a lot of talent in my high school. You know, like my school was more of a academics and a sports type of school. Mm-hmm. So like, if you didn't have a grade, you weren't going to make it regardless of how good you were. And if you were at the school and you weren't making the grades, regardless of how good you were, you weren't going to play. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really have like all the D1 talent that other schools had. So me playing on a team like that with a bunch of other players that are like at the same level and caliber as me, you know, it was different adjusting to like how I play because at high school, I was like the main offense. At AAU, I wasn't the main offense. I had four other guys on my on the court that could score just as well as me or better, you know. So it was a change. It kind of got me ready for, you know, like what was what was coming, you know, with college basketball because, you know, it in a sense, you know, like, it, the guy doesn't have to be better than you. He can just have more experience than you and he'll play more than you in, co- in college just because over experience. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just getting adapted to the level that, you know, you're playing with other top dogs, you know, like, because at, at D1 schools, like, it's just a team, bunch of top dogs going to one school and just, you know, trying to form together, you know, like most of the time, you know, they were the best player at high school and stuff like that. So everyone comes in with an agenda. It's just how you handle it and how you get form together a team, or, you know, to get win games. You know, and our coaching staff did a really good job on, on that. You know, they always, you know, stayed on us about our defense. And that's where I really started, like, getting to my defensive mindset of being, like, a defensive person because it got to a point where, you know, like, on my team, we were one of a lot of defensive guys. Like, we all played defense as a team, but they weren't really just guys that you would throw on their best player. So I was just like, no, I'm going to take that duty upon myself and just give me the best player and let the other guys score, and I'll get my scores off defense. You know, I'll just get I'll just get scores off steals. I'll get steals. I mean, points of transition, but I'm gonna focus on defense. So that's where I really came from, honestly, with my defense. But uh, I really do. I I I was really I was loyal to the St. Louis Eagles or Brad Beal Lee, and I really am thankful for what they have done for me. You kind of answered one of the questions we're gonna ask you next, and that is your defense mentality. 
because we know obviously this past year you took on the scoring role to a lot degree and you obviously scored 17 a game. But throughout your career, we always see you are kind of the utility guy. You can go out there and score at will, yes, but you're a guy that can lock up pretty much anywhere on the court. You're they're basically the best defensive player every time, everywhere you go. Your constant is always a guy that can pass, can facilitate, can get to the rim, you can rebound. Like there's nothing on the court you can't do. So do you say that kind of did start then? Was it starting with Radby Elite, same with Eagles? Like, is that when it really started for you? Yeah, because uh, it's so funny to me because, like, people from my high school or just people back home, they'll, like, see my defensive honors. They'll be like, you play defense? Like, they like people didn't really think I played defense like that in high school. Mm-hmm. And I tried to tell them. It was like – I tried to tell them, like, it's not that I didn't play defense. It's just I didn't play defense of this caliber. Because one, like, I wasn't getting – I was just getting scored on. It was just like I didn't just go out and just like really like take people's best player out of the game. But yeah, I think Brad Beal really did that because me being a point guard in the UIBL in my class, there were a lot of really good point guards. So if you didn't play your best defense, you were going to get embarrassed. And I couldn't get embarrassed. You know, I need to get a scholarship. So like I took it upon myself. Like I remember like my 17 year, I played Jose Alvarado from Georgia Tech, who had a really good career. Trey Young, who got, who obviously you know Trey Young is, and then I had played against Quad A Green, who had a you know who he was really good. Uh, a bar, I had a, it was a, a lot of high level point guards that I played my 17 year, and yeah, even Remy Martin. Yeah, I played Remy Martin. Remy Martin had a really good career. You know, like those are prolific players, and like even Remy Martin, he was a Player of the Year candidate midway through. You know, guys like that. You know, it's just like. It's it's a pride thing for me, and I feel like that goes back into my St. Louis roots as well. Like pride's a big thing. We don't like, we don't just like let people just allow, we don't allow people to come in and just do whatever they want. Like it's it's the show me state. Like you got you got to show us. Like that's how I look at things. So I wasn't just gonna go there and just get embarrassed, you know. So I think I took a different pride in my defense starting, you know, seventeen year uh, of AAU, and then it just really just prolonged, you know, going to my freshman year. I had a senior on my team who I was really close with. And, you know, I had I had struggled a little bit in the beginning of my freshman year because I had surgery on my left shoulder. Mm-hmm. So it was a struggle in the beginning. But I got to start starting in the conference season my freshman year consistently. You know, I was a consistent player. Mm-hmm. And after the season was over, you know, I was talking to a, a senior on my team, and he was just like, look, like, I'm graduating. And, you know, like, I was the defensive guy, you know, like, to keep yourself in the lineup and to keep yourself playing, like you need to be to take that role. So like they can't not play you because they're they're gonna need a guy to guard their best player. Mm-hmm. So then after he told me that, you know, like I really took it in and I really locked it on defense, and that's when I won the all whack defense uh, my sophomore year, and that was big for me. And that really kind of started the ball rolling on my defensive presence, you know, just being recognized that way, and then you know just getting better on defense the next year with Coach Donlin being a defensive mastermind that he is, you know, it, it, you know, him put me, me with him as my coach, you know, it took my defensive game to a whole different level that next year. And then, you know, as it, it just kept progressing defensively for me at, uh, by as the years went on. There are some traits that make guys great defenders. Obviously we see guys that are super long can be grown great ones, but end of the day, 99% of that is based on your mentality because you have to have that sign of saying really have a ton of confidence. You go up against a guy like Jason Tatum, Debatably number one player, top three, obviously on all sides back then in, in high school. You go up against all those guys you listed. What's your mentality when a coach says, all right, we're playing Trey Young, we're playing Jason Tatum, we're playing Jose Alvarado. What switches in your mindset and how do you go into that game and say, I'm going to lock you up and you're not going to score this game? They're human. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they put jerseys on, they put socks on, they tie shoes up the same way I do. And like they're doing some, you know, space jam worthy or, Mm-hmm. You know, ain't nothing crazy. You know, it's just I always, you know, like I feel like with people, you know, you can't give a, a you can't give a good player too much respect, or you can't give them too much. You know, it's, like it really just respect because if, you, if a good player is going to see it when he's respected by his defender and he's going to take advantage of that, and that gives him more confidence. You know, like if you go out there and you like you let them know, like I don't I don't fear you, I don't care who you are, like you're going to like then they're going to have to actually work for it. You know, like. The goal is just to make them like I'm not gonna sit here and just say I'm gonna hold somebody to zero. I'm just gonna say if you're gonna score, I'm gonna make that bucket very hard for you to score. Mm-hmm. And if you do score, I'm gonna be like, all right, you score. Now, like, like I'm shaking your hand. I'm like, we're gonna you just gotta do it again. You're gonna have to keep doing it. 
because I'm not going to stop. I'm not just going to give up. Like, if you score once, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to come harder the next time. I'm just going to keep re- repeatedly coming harder. And then, you know, and I, I'm just going just gonna to keep dogging. I'm just, like, I'm a, I am I really refer myself as a dog. I'm just going to keep pestering you. Like, it's just, I'm just going to be there. Ain't nothing else to be around it. So out of all the guys you have played throughout high school, throughout your college career so far, who's that one guy that you'd say is your personal favorite matchup? Like, you enjoy going against Sam the most? Max Asmus. Max Asmus was my best, my favorite matchup, I think. Uh, you know, number one, number one scoring in the nation. You know, uh, I mean that that was one player that you know I really respected a lot. You know, after see, like I don't really, I don't, I, like I'm, I'm, I'm a confident dude. Like I'm, I got too much pride for all that. I don't like giving a lot of players a lot of props, but that's one guy that I still talk to this day. I still talk to him that I respected on the court you know he hits he hits shots I can't I tell everybody that I'm like you can't leave him open like you can't he's gonna make it if you leave him open and if he misses the slightest bit then he's gonna make the next three like it like like I was just like his scoring ability is something that you know I, I mean like I, it, it was it was really something to really just like not even admire but just like it was something to respect you know like me being a defensive guy that I am and like I'd make it really hard for him sometimes. He'd still score. I just like, you got to shake his hand on that one. You know, I'm like, mm-hmm. and me and him went back and forth both games. We both had the same amount of points both games. We split. So that was just a really just fun matchup for me because most of the time I was guarding him. And, you know, and majority of the game he guarded me. But, you know, they threw a lot of different guys at me in that series. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no, just that, that matchup was really just one for me, you know, that I'll probably keep close. I'm glad you said that because personally, I'm someone that doesn't always just watch the high majors. I was like watching all conferences. And for those that truly did watch Oral Roberts play throughout the course that last year, people wouldn't be as shocked as some people were in terms of them making that little run there and so-called Cinderella run because Max, like you said, he's one of not the most dynamic score in the country last year. Like you said, he could literally score from anywhere. He was Trey Young type in terms of just shooting from anywhere on the court, you get to the rim. And you add in a guy like Kevin O'Banner and other guys too. And exactly. I- that was the one thing about that series that, you know, like I kind of take back and I'm just like, wow. Like he was in foul trouble both games against us. And like, he didn't play a lot. So like me, like, like me seeing him, like not in foul trouble, like in a tournament, I was like, wow, like, he really is like 50, 50. Like I didn't even know he was a 50, 50, 90 guy. And so like, they brought it up. I'm just like, if Ohio State doesn't play right, they're going to lose to Oral Roberts because they have two people that can score 30. I, I said it. I was like, they have two people that can score 30 any given night. And sure enough, they did. So it's just like, it's just, it, and like, I've seen that team, like, I, like you said, like a lot of people don't pay attention to like the mid major conferences and stuff like that. And like, you go back and watch one of their games, they put up 100 in regulation. Yep. Like, team, like, teams that can do that, like, you can't, you can't underestimate teams like that that put up 100 in regulation. Like, like, that's, that's crazy. Like, Nah, so yeah, but uh, I mean, like there are obviously some mid, like some high major matchups, like uh, Marcus Carr. That was a fun matchup. Mm-hmm. Like that was a good, he was a good guard, but no, definitely just in conference, you know, uh, playing as Max. That was my most, that was my most challenged, most wanted matchup that I that I've had. This is jumping a little bit ahead too, but when we talk about you being a mid major. Obviously, I just said to you guys aren't going to get the attention that high majors will and that you're going to get this upcoming year in at Florida. But how does that kind of make build that kind of dog mentality in you guys? Like, because you guys don't get everything the high majors do, nowhere near the attention. Obviously, for majority of mid majors, it's going to be a one bid team to the tournament each year. How does that kind of put a chip on your guys' shoulders as you guys go out there, play and develop, and obviously become teams that could put together a Cinderella run when it comes to the tournament? I mean, honestly, like, I don't, I don't think. I don't, I don't look at it as my chip getting bigger, strong. I don't I don't look at it like that. I mean, I'm not changing. You know, like my mindset's the same. Like my mindset's the same as gonna be as I went to the mindset for Converse tournament. Whether you know KC is gonna be with Florida, you know, I wanna win. Like that's like that's flat out what it is. I wanna win and I'm gonna do anything I could possibly do to win. Like if I gotta dive on a ball, if I gotta dive on the ground for balls, if I gotta box out anybody, I don't it doesn't matter. Like I'll just do it because I wanna win that bad, you know. And uh, you know, like, like you said, with high majors, like, you know, like us getting multiple bids and stuff like that, like, that's great. And like, I would like, you know, but like, I don't, I don't want to just rely on like an at large bid. You know, I want to win. Like, I want to go on a SEC and, you know, and, you know, you know, make noise, you know, and do, and like, do what we need to do and take care of business, you know, and like, you not even have a question that, you know, when that day comes that the tournament names are being listed that like, 
we know we're going to be in the tournament. You know, like, we ain't got to worry about that. We ain't got, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, I just, I, I'm just ready, you know, to get there and, you know, just get to it. Cause I feel like this group that we have that coach White's putting together is special. We're going to finish up touching more about Florida, but I guess let's kind of go back to your high school career a little bit. Cause that's really what kind of create your name, start your buzz out there. So you go out there your freshman year, you end up spending four years at St. Louis university school. Take us that decision. Why is that the school you originally did choose to attend though? So when it came down to for high school, I was either going to go to SLU High School or Shamnad with Jason and all them. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I could have went to Shamnad and won a state ring and state rings and did the, you know, just kind of just been on the super team. But I've never been one to just want it easy, mm-hmm. you know. And I, uh, Coach Claggett, the head coach at SLU, that's someone who's really close to me on and off the court. Like to this day, like that, like that's someone that I'll call almost every day and talk to. And I trusted him and what he had planned. You know, he told me he's like, I got, I got all these seniors, your know, freshman year, and they graduate. And after that, you know, it's it's up from there. So I trusted that. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, my freshman year, I didn't do much, didn't really play a lot, just watched and learned the game. And then sophomore year, after my 15 u season with the Eagles. We had played up all year. We played 16U all year, and we were winning almost every game. We probably lost about we probably lost single digit games. Like like the amount of games was single digits playing up a year in that type of type of type of level in UIBL. And you know, like playing that when I came back my sophomore year, like people didn't know who I was. Like it was just like I I, I it, it came so easy. Like I remember like the second or third home game, I had 33. And I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just like, oh, I got 33. I'm just like, it, it just felt so easy at that point. But then, you know, like guys, like that next year, like guys got a new, oh, now we know who Brandon is. So like now we got to prepare for him. Because that's the thing. I feel like I always tell you that my sophomore year was the easiest year because no one knew who I was, mm-hmm. you know? So it was like, I just took everybody by, by like storm. And they were like, like, who, who is this? Like, they were like, yeah. But no, sophomore year really is when I blew up. I hit the game winner in districts to win districts for my school in the, the first time in 22 years. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you know, like taking them to the uh, state semifinals back to back years and winning all state three years, uh, three years in a row and winning a uh, conference player of the year, my senior year, and like just doing everything for that school. You know, it was, it was, it was a better route for me. You know, I made a name for myself. Like you said, like I have my own buzz for being at SLU. Like that's that's why I did that. You know, I wanted to make a name for myself. I didn't want to just be a list of names in the back of a highlighted name. You know, I wanted to be the highlighted name. Mm-hmm. So when you first head into high school, before you achieved all the stuff you just talked about, would you have seen yourself becoming a guy that was going to become a Division One player and eventually then becoming a high major guy at Florida who very likely could be starting this coming year? If you had told me my – my junior year, not even, okay, I'll go freshman. You told my freshman year that I was going to be a D1 player. Mm-hmm. I would have just laughed and I'd have been like, because I didn't really even, t- I didn't even look at it like that yet. Like I took it seriously to an extent. I was like, I was working out and all that stuff. And like, I wanted to make varsity my freshman year, but I didn't really like know that much about like AAU. I got played on AAU team, but like I didn't take it seriously, you know, like as other guys did until like my high school career. Mm-hmm. So like, I saw, that's why I said like my junior year after everything. And like, if you had told me my junior year that I was going to end up in Florida from like my last year, I would have laughed at you. Like I really would have laughed. I'm like, yeah, like that's like, let's be realistic. Like that's not going to happen. Cause like my, my recruitment process was a struggle at my high school. You know, like even I did everything I did, I had like three offers and I mean, like it, it was rough. I was, I feel like, you know, personally I was under-recruited, but at the end of the day, I mean, I took the opportunity that was given to me and I made it something for the better. And that's what, and that's what I like doing. You know, I don't, I don't like as much as I would have wanted all the offers and all that stuff. I like that. I had to really just make it out for myself. I had to make something of my, uh, out of it, what I was given, you know, and that's what I like doing. So I really did appreciate the, the opportunity that Casey gave me. For a lot of guys in today's world, they say, okay, I'm a good player and I see these prep schools coming up. I could go to these places and play a national schedule somewhere. I could go somewhere and get a lot more attention on me. It's going to help my recruiting, possibly even get myself ranked. That's what a lot of guys do, but you chose to stay at school for four years. Obviously, you didn't get all the offers originally that you probably could have dreamed of, but was that ever something you considered? Like, did you ever consider even possibly going to school like Chaminade? Did you ever consider moving on to 
a bigger school with a bigger opportunity? Uh, there's a couple of times where in my head, you know, I was frustrated. I'd be like, oh, I want to transfer and go to a different school, you know, and play on a better schedule and play with better. Like, you know, I, I thought about that. But mm-hmm. then again, it went back to just my standards and myself. Like, nah, I, I don't I don't quit on people. I don't give up. You know, like, that's not who I am, you know. So I just – I really just you – know, I, I, those four years, you know, like, I, I trusted my coach. That's really what it was. I trusted my coach with my career. Honestly, you know, and even I like talking about prep schools. I didn't want to leave an area that I knew had such great competition every night. Yeah. Like I had, like I, I competed every night. Like, like outside, like the schools that I listed in my conference, there were a lot of school. There were schools that had great players on, on a team. Like you look at Vashon, who had guys like Mario McKinney and and people like that on that team. That like that team won state probably like five out of the last six, seven years. Then you got guys like Webster Groves who had Courtney Ramey who went to Texas, you know, guys like that. Like there's a lot of schools out there that really had talent that like, and there, then there were schools that had talent that people that never heard of that were really just St. Louis basketball players that were good. Like they were like, they were really just good basketball players that just didn't, you know, make it out, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I didn't want to leave just because I knew I had such great competition back in St. Louis. Like, why would I want to leave that? You know? And, restart my journey again like that's one thing about me is just like why am i gonna restart something that i already started why don't i just finish it so. i have one other question i want to touch up on because when you look at the whole st lou area your kind of generation in terms of like your four years in, in high school the guys you played against who would you say would be like the dream team if you guys could put together like a first of all there are five starters on and kind of put together four or five bench pieces like the best possible st louis guys of this past little era you've been in high school and that all of you guys have translated now to the NBA and college level. I'm going to go out of my four years. I'm going to put Jordan Barnes at the one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put me at the two. I'm going to put Xavier Sneed at the three. No, Yeah, I'm going to put Xavier Sneed at the three. I'm going to put Jason at as as another player he's non-positionless he's just on the team and then tyler cook at the five Mm -hmm. and then coming off the bench i got hold on no 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 oh man this is hard because i got so many got it's like you can't just put a starting lineup together because there's so many people that you could put in the starting lineup you know but like like just say that five just that's strictly st louis and if you really want to put in the area, because like the area, when you say the area, it's kind of like we play like six like Illinois teams. Mm-hmm. Like that's why I was saying that's why I double thought. But I'm just gonna keep it St. Louis area. I'll bring uh I'll bring I'll bring Courtney Ramey, Jericho Helms, mm-hmm. Mikey Lewis, uh Cartier Gordon and one more, one more. I'm gonna go with Mario McKinney. That's a dog. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Mario McKinney. That's my ten. That's the ten people I'm picking. Like if I like, you gotta bring nine people with you. I'm starting five and five bench players. Uh, that probably be my ten. Let me my my nine off the top of my head. If you take that group of guys and you put them against all of the states in America, where are you gonna rank up against? If you if if you took a if you took like the group of like the like I like we like talking with St. Louis guys like we know who the real hoopers were so I'm gonna say if you took the real hoopers from St. Louis like the guys that really just get down and like gritty like I don't I don't see many guys I don't see many states you know I don't like you get the hype from like California because California is a big place and like the, the East Coast and all that stuff I don't really care about none of that like. I'm taking St. Louis before anybody. That's just me, though. That's my pride. I'm taking St. Louis before I take anybody else. Like, if you put the real Hoopers together as a team, I feel like we're going to go win. Mm-hmm. Just because that's who we are. So now that one guy you said is positionalist, who's now an NBA All-Star, is Jason Tatum. And you got to go up against him three times. That he, and Unfortunately, Ultraman ended up knocking us out of tournament. But what was their battles like against him? Obviously, he's this young guy, up and coming. He's a superstar. What was it like going against Jason throughout your high school career? 
So I played him probably three, four times a year. So it wasn't like I just saw him once. And I was like, oh, cool. Like I seen him once. No, at least, on at least bare minimum twice, could we play him in conference twice. But we always get a third time or a fourth time. Like one time we played him, we played him really the Friday of the Saturday of a tournament. And we came back around and played him that Tuesday. On a, like literally we played him again. Like we was already in there again. And I was like, man, we can't shake him. But, uh, you know, with Jason, you know, I always tell people like he was practicing everything he's doing now. He was just practicing that in high school. Like it was really just like he was just just running reps, you know. Then one like you was finna just everyone made teams out there that you could just be like, yeah, we're gonna hold Jason to below fifteen. Like no, he's gonna get his twenty plus. Is what you do with the other players on this team, and that's kind of what it really was with the game plan is like making sure other players didn't beat you because you knew what Jason was gonna do. You know what Jason was gonna do is understood. What like that was just understood. You can't really do much about that. Is what is what you're gonna do with the other players in the team. So, you know, battling against him, you know, like their starting lineup, they had three kids about like six, seven in the starting lineup. And you know, like Jason would guard me. You know, he's tall. Like trying to get a shot up over him or Tyler Cook, that's like six nine plus. It was it was different for me when I was just like out, out the gate. You know, being that young kid that like didn't really know much but you know like as i like you know as i kept playing them you know like i got used to it and i started getting fearless you know like i don't care anymore like i'm like you know if we win or lose you know like i'm just gonna play scare i'm gonna go i'm gonna go attack everybody that i see so i mean like that's what i'm saying like just like playing in environments like that with the like that kind of got me in like that motive is just like not caring of who it was like i'm already playing one of the best players in the country countless times so like why why do I gotta fear why I gotta fear anybody else? I don't fear y'all. You know, so that's how I really looked at it. So we, you always end up going through this recruiting process, then you also do end up at UMKC. But walk us that process though. How is that the team you could decide to go to? Obviously, Coach Richardson lands you originally out the gate, but how is that the school you chose and why is that the school you originally chose? UMKC was a school I chose because for one, I had a really great relationship with one of the coaches there. Uh, and for two, it was close to home. It was three hours away. I'm a really big family person, you know, and I, I still am, but I'm moving a really long distance away from home. But, you know, this first, like, this was good for me to have my pa- family here for four years and be able to support me. Like, that was really good. Like, a lot of, a lot of players don't get that. You know, I had, I had my mom at almost every home game until COVID hit. You know, people don't get that. They don't get to see their mom every 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 game. I got that blessing, you know. And I'm really close to my mom, my dad. My dad would come to a lot of home games. You know, he worked. My grandpa, he would drive with my mom. Like, I got – I was truly blessed to be able to have family consistently at games. So, that was a blessing. But other than that, you know, it was an opportunity. You know, like the coach told me, that it's an opportunity for you, you know, to come in and be a, a, an impact player, you know, like to come in, you know, really be a, a guy on our team and that was before I had my surgery and all that stuff and you know nothing really I mean it, it, it tried they tried to change that when I had my surgery but I didn't allow it you know I kind of I worked really hard and I got in the gym a lot more and I really made the case for myself now when you look over your entire career now is there like a certain time that you would look back and you say okay this is when it started clicking for me like now I felt like okay I'm going to be a great player. Do you think you could be as good as you were your freshman year? Did it come at some point during your college career? Like, when did you start realizing I can become one of the better players in UMKC history? Uh, around my junior year, around around conference time. Mm-hmm. Conference time that I started, I started getting a lot more confidence in myself. You know, I, I, that was my junior year is my first year playing point guard. Because if you really, if you was to look at my career, my freshman and sophomore year, I played the three, four. I played, I really played the three, four, you know? So me transitioning to the one as like a bigger guard, it changed, Coach Dallin really did change, you know, like the outcome of my, like my career, you know, he kind of took it for a spin, you know, for the better, you know, I do owe Coach Don, you know, a good amount of respect for, you know, making me a point guard and, you know, work him working with me every day because, you know, you ask anyone, he's really hard on his point guards because he was a point guard. And, you know, I took that, I took all that head on and I worked really hard and I got a lot of extra time with him and watching film. 
you know, it, it really made a turn for me around like junior year. I think the first game that started was CBU Cal Baptist at Cal Baptist. I had a good game. I had like 15, my teammate had 16. And like, I just had, a, it was a game where I felt like, you know, like I was just in control whenever I I really just wanted to score, I could score, you know, and it, and it, that just, that, 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 ball just kept rolling you know like I started you know starting in that mindset of being a, a scorer you know and like mm-hmm. like developing myself as like a true player like as like a player in like d1 basketball because like as much like I said my first sophomore year I was a driver or I was just a one-way player but like by the end of this year like now I'm a, I got three level type player and you know I can score inside I can score mid-range I can score three you know like it's like I've truly developed my game a lot. And, you know, I do owe a lot of credit to Coach Don because Coach Don and I put a lot of hours in, a lot of hard work over the summers, over off seasons, over just after practices, outside of practices. Like, it really, all that paid off, you know. So, but, like, I knew coming in this year that I had a chance to be good. I had, I had, a, I had, a, good, I had a good chance to be good this year. I didn't expect it to be as good of a year as it was. I never expect anything like that, but I I knew, you know, I I told my mom, I was like, if I know, like, you know, if like if I play, if I play right, you know, if I really just stick to it, I can average like fit like 16, 18 plus. Mm-hmm. And she's like, we well, gotta do it. And like, you know, I had never thought I'd average 17 a game, you know, in a, in a in a school year, you know, my four years, you know. So I mean, like, yeah, like this year was really just like a like I, you know, I you know, like you see, you can feel it but you don't want to say it because you don't want to like jinx or anything. Mm-hmm. That's how I kind of was about it. I was like, I, I, I could feel it. Now I got to make it happen, you know? So you've had a few big coaches in your life. Obviously, back going back to high school, Coach Claggett, obviously, was a guy that played at the college level, played as a great shooter. Just mentioned Coach Donlin. He obviously was a player that also – how big was it for you like, having these guys that have done it at the level you're currently at? How big was that for you to kind of help mentor you and kind of help you develop on the court? Well – I'm um, coach Clegg mentored me a lot. And another coach that, you know, I didn't really mention was my AAU coach and my trainer who's been training me since my seventh grade year, who was coach Pee Wee. He really t- took me under his wing and really groomed me into like my skill set. My skill set that I have is really like really formed by him, you know, and I, I work out with him every day when I get back home, you know, and he, like, he's been a really big person in my life. That's given me, he's seen it all. He's, He's coached a bunch of pros. He's been he's been in that situation. Like he played at Slu too. Like having him around out of anyone, mostly having him around, you know, because he's always been the most honest and just most direct with me. You know, and we have our we have our ups and downs because we're kind of alike in a way, you know. But like I, I do all I owe a lot to him for being in my life and you know, and just having that advice and being that mentor for me. But like you said, like having like these coaches, you know, like having Coach Clagg and Coach Pee Wee and Coach Donlin, and even having my first coach, Coach Richardson, you know, before the coach changed, like having all the those great guys, you know, that have like done, you know, different things, you know, like I've always been a player to just be coachable. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just just be a coach, you know, is something that I, need, like I try to work on. So, you know, like just, le- just learning from all of those different coaches, you know, and really just picking their brains, you know, and like, taking that time with them, like, it, it it helps a lot. It helped me a lot, you know, and that's why I'm, I've already developed a relationship with the coaches here at, you know, U of F, you know. I like to have, like, a relationship with my coaches, you know. Having those guys, you know, it really helps just, like, on the court IQ, you know. Well, it's kind of going to get a little bit deeper in some of the years. In freshman, you go out there, and you also have a guy that's obviously now become a, had a great year at the Iona this past season, Isaiah Ross. What was it like having him? What was it like playing alongside him for a year? Uh, playing with Zay, uh, I went to Zay literally hit 10 threes in the game. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like Zay, Zay is a prolific shooter. And I always tell people that, but, uh, you know, playing with Zay, I was one of my closest friends. I talked to him to this day. Uh, so I was really happy to see him do it. I don't know. I was really happy, and it was. He called me right after, and he was like, "So what you thinking?" You know, and I was like, "You staying?" And I got thinking about more. If you staying, I was just messing with him. And he was, and he told me he, what he was going to do. So I was happy for him. You know, 
And, you know, he was just like, you know, whatever you decide to do, you know, I got, you know, you got my support 100%. You know, that's how it's always been between me and him. So that freshman, like you said, you didn't start off as a starter. You had to work your way into that. You eventually do become that then like right around conference time. And that's when you really turn up because on the year you average about 8.3 rebounds. But conference time is when you average nearly 11 points per game. What led to that breakout? Like, how were you able to start playing at that level as a freshman? So, like I said, I played the four. Mm-hmm. So, uh, there were a lot of times where I had a four-man guarding me. And I'm, a, and I'm a pretty fast player. So I just outran the big and just got to the rim and laid the ball up. You know, I, I, I could finish. I've always been able to finish. You know, that's one thing I've always been able to do. But also my freshman year, uh, you, you like during non-conference, I was really trying to figure the ropes, you know, like how you score. And it hit me one day after a game. I was like, you can't score 10 points if you can't shoot a three. You know, like mm-hmm. you're not going to get five layups easy. Like you got to make threes. So that's when I really took time my freshman year with like the low schedule that I had to just get in the gym and just shoot. So I came out my freshman year, I was 10 for 10 from three. My first 10 attempts in conference, I was 10 for 10. Like I didn't miss. So it was just like me opening myself up that lane to drive because I was shooting the ball that well helped me out score more because like, I, I, once I figured that out, I was like, yeah. I was like, now nah, I got to figure it out. Because I would, I would get in there and I would just try to drive to the rim. And they would just be there. I'm like, like, why are guys getting so easy lanes? And I'm not. Like, they just – and then I figured out it was scouting. You know, like, you got to show them that you can shoot the ball. So, they got to press up. So, then – so, like, yeah, like, that's why I was. Like, I figured it out. I really – it clicked. It started to click for me. That's what it was. And that's why I started playing better. And I and like people always joke with me. It was like you. All, I, I always they say I always play better in conference. You know, and I, and I always tell like, hey, like when conference comes, that's when the, that's when the lights turn on. That's when I start playing better. That's when I start shooting better too. So yeah, it's always just been that way. Like conference, I always start playing so a little bit better than I was playing in non-conference, and I always start shooting a little better too. You become a guy. Like I said earlier that you really can do everything on the court at a high level and. Obviously, I'm not saying this is your comparison or something that you play like, but in terms of like what LeBron does to a team, he comes in, obviously, can is really able to dominate any aspect of the game. He can pick apart defense. He can get to the rim, score from anywhere on the court. Like, how have you learned to master that? Because you've become so great at everything on the on the court. A coach could ask you to do a shooting, drive, anything he needs, and you're going to master that. You play at a high level at that. How have you become so dominant on so many different aspects on the game? Uh, I think I just had to watch, watch a lot of film. Mm. Uh not just mine, but uh, I watch game. I watch other games, watch other players, you know, similar in my position or, you know, like in my like type of like playing style. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'll just – and, like, there'll be days where I just sit back and just watch all my possessions and I'll just go through them and I'll just be like, yes, I did this here, but what can I do differently in the long run? And, you know, I'll sit there and I'll watch – like if, we, if I know what teams are playing – I'll watch their games and I'll see what defenses they play so I can see what what works and what doesn't work and what they miss and what slips through. Because, like, the one thing is, like, what like what are the things that are going to be there when the defense faults, you know? And what can you hit them with, like, quick hitters or what can you hit with them? And, like, like that's going to, like, hurt their defense or hurt their defensive pride, you know? And, like, and then it's, like, when do you do it? Because you can't do it too early because then they'll fix it, you know? So it's just, like, Knowing, like, knowing their tendencies and knowing your opponent, that's what they, I took pride on knowing my opponent a lot. That's one thing I always knew. Like, I knew, like, who would guard me before I even get on the court. I know, I already know who's going to guard me. And I know how he guards me. I watch how he guards. I watch how he reaches. I watch how he plays. You know, like, I watch all that. When people play zone, I watch how the zone moves. Like, let that help me get on the court and just see all that when I'm on the court. There was something about you when you guys went out there and played Chicago State. For whatever reason, you tend to have all your career highs nearly against those teams. I was especially you guys didn't play them because you just switched conferences. But your prior three years, you pretty much either tied, you set your career high. Every time you went out there and played that team, what went into and why you produced at that level against Chicago State? Yeah, my freshman year, I remember I had like 25 mm-hmm. against them. And I'm like, I'm sitting here like I got 25, and we and the thing is we lost that game. I was so mad that we lost. I'm like, of course the game that we had, I have 25. My freshman year, we lose, but it's just like 
I feel like the first game, because the first game we played them, I had 18 at home. And I was just like, I was like, I was trying to win. I remember I was trying to win like freshman of the year or a freshman team. Like I was trying to do something because like I was just, I was like, I was, like you said, I was averaging like 11 in conferences as a freshman, you know, like that was starting to like scale up the scoring a little bit. So, you know, I was just like, like might as well just bump up a little bit more. And like, and like this is a great opportunity. So I just went at him, you know, like I was just like, I, I've always just wanted to go at, I, it's not like it's just like Chicago State. I, I try to go at everyone, honestly. It's just like, I don't know. I guess just like when you have more confidence, shot, more shots fall, I guess. So I just feel like I, in a higher confidence I get against them, I guess, than other teams. Your sophomore year, you guys weren't too successful in terms of win-loss record once again. But you, as you said, you kind of broke out defensively. You made the all-whack defensive team. Walk us through that sophomore year, though. Kind of take us through the ups and downs of that year. Uh. You know, we had a, a group. We had a group that could be good, but you know, it was just they. Like, there were players on the team that didn't want to be good. Like they didn't get in the gym. They didn't work on their game. They were just being selfish. Honestly, they were really being selfish for the for what the team. You know, the thing is, they wanted to. They like they sit there and be like, I want to win. All that like I want to like, but they didn't do anything to like move that forward to help us win. You know, mm-hmm. and you know there were ups and downs. You know, like I got I had a concussion. Early in the season, I missed a couple games. Uh, you know, we had a couple – we were fighting some injuries with player, like key players were fighting injuries throughout the whole season. I was dealing with torn ligaments in my ankle for the whole conference season. I got to literally walk in with a boot, take the boot off, play, and then put the boot back on and walk out. You know, it, it was things like that, you know, just like battling with injuries. Because that happened last year like – my, my last year, my freshman year too. You know, like just dealing with that, you know, but uh, my sophomore year, I was named captain. Uh, so I took a different chip in my shoulder. You know, like I was like, I'm a, I'm a prominent player. I'm a captain. I got to I got to I got to produce, you know, like mm-hmm. and then like, again, I had to take the pride of being the defensive guy. And the way my co- my first coach, we picked up full. Like I was picking up full. I was picking up the best player full like and like. If you don't know, like picking up somebody full in D1, that's like an island for real. Like you're really on an island. And, you know, like it got to the point where I was like, either I'm going to sink or I'm going to, or either I'm going to sink or swim. And, you know, and that's what I really feel like, you know, like throughout all the ups and downs, you know, like I never sunk. You know, I never wanted to sink. I just wanted to keep swimming and I just keep fighting. And sure enough, like all my hard work that I did on both ends of the of ball kind of paid off for me. I felt like, I feel like what I did on offensive end kind of helped me win all whack defense at freshman year, I mean, my sophomore year, because I mean, like I didn't have the best. Like I mean, like, yeah, like I held uh, Milan Aqua to eight at home. I held Carlos Johnson to eight at home. Like I held I held some key guys to eight, but you know you had you had other players in there that played really good defense too. So you know I felt like me you know playing the way I played kind of separated that a little bit as well. We then as a coaching change, Coach Richardson gets fired, obviously, to bring in a new coaching staff. Take us to that because a lot of guys, especially in today's world, if there's a coaching change, they might look to move on. It might not be the easiest transition. How are you able to get accustomed to that? Obviously, it made you play at an even a higher level, but how just kind of walk us through this whole transition, how you felt with it, how you dealt with it. Just walk us through that transition. So when Coach got fired, he got fired right after the game. You know, we had – we was in Vegas knowing that he was fired. You know, like we kind of went through all that. We came back. Everything happened. Coach got named. Coach Donald got named coach. And I hadn't put my pearl, pearl, my name in the pool at all. Like, I had just stayed, you know, you know, like, I had kind of just made some, like, I was staying at UMKC regardless of what happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was close to the AD, and I was talking to him, you know, I was just like, he, was, he, he wanted me to stay, you know. And you know, I was thinking about it, obviously, because, like, personally, for me, like, I didn't want to have to restart again and f- fear and like me fear that like you know like I go through the same thing I just went through my freshman and sophomore year but it was another thing for me that it was just like I I felt emotionally at to the school you know I, I already had given so much in my first two years you know why leave now you know so when coach Don came in and you know he he gave his up downs about how he's how he runs things you know, personally, I fell in love with it. You know, like he was just like, I'm a defensive oriented guy. Like you're going to play for me if you play defense. Like I wanted that. You know, like I liked that. Like that made me excited to play, you know. And I did put my name in the portal. 
but I ended up coming back, you know, like, it was just because I was just like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I ended up coming back and, you know, that was, that was, it wasn't really a hard thing for me. It was really just kind of just me getting back healthy after the ankle injury. And then that first summer, Coach Don took me for a whirl. Like, that was like a whole different world for me. Like, I didn't even know that that was the type of, like, like, I'm going to be real. It's like, like, that was when I really just started working hard. Like, he, Coach Don really showed me really how to, like, work, like, extremely hard. And I worked extremely hard for the past two years, and it really did pay off. When you put your name in the portal that first time, do you remember what schools were reaching out to you? Was it any schools of the higher level? Uh, like higher or? No, not really, like, no high majors. I was getting uh, Missouri Valley Conference schools. Uh, Missouri Valley schools were talking to my coaches and stuff like that. I was personally talking to SIUC, Carbondale, uh, and then, you know, a, a couple other schools. But other than that, not not many schools. I, I, I wasn't in the portal for that long. I was honestly in the portal for about, probably like a week and a half. And I was just back at school. So, yeah. But no, it was, it was, it was not, I would say the only portal experience that was anything close to what it was this past coming was when I put my name in the portal in December. That was kind of a crazy time. But I ended up coming back. Everyone knows what happened. I went in the portal, came back play a conference and now we're here so and obviously coach Donlin was a great coach for you guys you just ended up going 16 to 14 that junior campaign and you have your by far your best year once again you make the all defensive team you guys playing at a high level kind of think it's that year and what that year was like uh that year was a different year because it was a different team a whole different new group of guys a couple guys stayed with me like three four guys stayed with me mm-hmm. from the old team and a new coach we ended we really, honestly, we like the reason why we probably had the success, success we did. Like, if you go back and look at our uh, conference season, we went seven and two or seven and three uh, conference, and we were playing our best basketball. And I'm pretty sure we would have did something very special in the tournament if COVID didn't hit. But that team really bought in to what what was going on because you know, it was something new. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, when you do something new, you really have to just buy in. So we really just bought into what, what Coach Don was really showing us. And that summer that we had, that June, July we had, really laid a foundation because, like, we we really focused on defense a lot that summer. Uh, there was a lot of skill development, but defense was the focus, and that really helped us get ready for defense when we played the games, like, that season. There was also a big addition you guys had that ultimately kind of made himself become, in a way, a dynamic duel with yourself this past year, and that's Josiah. Take us through him, though. Like, how special was he, and what was it kind of seeing him develop into really becoming a, one of the leaders on the team last year? So Joe came in as a freshman. He, he's the youngest kid on our, on our team. He's really young, like really young. And freshman year, you know, he was this goofy kid that, you know, he lived in the gym, like religiously. Like he was just in the gym. Like he would – I, I would I would take him with me and like we would go in the mornings, breakfast, practice, um, no, well morning morning workout morning shooting breakfast school, practice middle of the day. And, you know, I would shoot a little bit after practice. And he'd still be there. Like he'd be coming back at like eight thirty, and then he just go to sleep. And the cycle would repeat for him. And he's always been that way. He's still that way. Like he's really just a workhorse that like. Like he's not one of those like those like those bigs that you see that are just like God given gifts, you know. He has them God given gifts of like athleticism and the ability to shoot, but like everything Josiah has shown, he's worked for, and I and I'm and I'm an advocate for that. I will always like protest. Like he worked for everything that he got. Like he he's really worked his he's really worked his tail off. The, and me watched him grow into the player that he was this past year. You know, like it really made me like happy. You know, like I'm ha- like I'm happy for him. Like I'm excited to see what he does these next two years. Like, because you know, like I know he's just gonna be like a really great player in the summit. You know, yeah, like, he has the ability to be a great player. He can put it on the floor. He can shoot. He can post. He'll defend. Like he does. He does a lot. Like people said, I do do it all. Like he does a lot. Like that, 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 you know, like a lot doesn't get told on, or uh, but he does a lot, and like he really does, like he, like he gets, he doesn't get enough credit for what he does, you know, you know, and then like honestly, like I, I remember like there were like times that me and him would just have conversation. I look at him and be like, look, I'm gonna be real with you. 
Like out of my four years, you as a sophomore is the best big I've played with. Mm. Out of my four years as a sophomore, you're the best big that I've played with. And you need to play like you're the best big that's ever came through Kansas City. Just keep playing that way. Because like, you know, young guys, like even I was young, I, my, my confidence wavered when I had a bad game. Being like a sophomore that is expected to do a lot. You know, like you have games where you do bad and you kind of, your confidence wavers. So like, I took it upon myself to just make sure that like he, his confidence never wavered and, you know, cause him confident is just a better player for our team. You know, cause he, his ability to score is just, is really, is amazing. Honestly, he has a really good ability to score, not, not even just back to the basket, but just shooting and just getting to the rim. Like he, like he can do it. So as you said, then the season comes to a close, you get into the lockdown pandemic. And at that point in time, we obviously don't know, how long this is going to be going on for. So you as a basketball player, know each guy kind of approached it differently, what they wanted to work on, what they keyed in on. What was your mindset? At that time, you knew you only had one year left and you were hoping there's going to be a season. But what were you really working on? Like, what was the biggest things you improved on during the pandemic? My conditioning and my shooting, I think, because I sat down with myself and my, my, my mentor. And I was like, look, like, this is what I do well. I can get to the rim. I can defend. I can hit close shots. You know, I want to work on my catch shooting. I work on my pull up threes. I work on my pull ups. You know, like we work on my pull ups all the time. And like honestly, I, that's probably one aspect of my game that I never showed was my ability to just play in the mid range and pull up and like all that stuff. Be creative in that way. And hope and I'll be. I'm planning on showing that more this upcoming season. And just like my ability to score and create how creative I am with the ball. But, um, you know, I sat down with my mentor. I was just like, look, like, I want to be I, I want to sh- be able to shoot the ball. Like, I want people to look at me as a three-point threat. Mm-hmm. So, like, that that uh, quarantine period, I ran every day, and I would make 200 plus threes, 300 plus threes every day, catch and shoot. It, was, it wasn't any pull-ups. It was just me sitting there catching and shooting just repeated just that repeated motion and just getting in the habit of shooting the same way every time and like it's like because like now i'm at the point where i know if it's going in or not like i just know like i already know if it's gonna go in or off the release so no like just getting to that point and just staying that way and just staying trained like that was something that i focused on a lot like my shooting because that was something that was so inconsistent in my game of just me being a three-point shooter like you know like guys but all you can back up off them until he makes one then you got be pressed no, you're gonna call me for jump. Like that's how that's how I went about it. You now had three complete years of no issues, and then you come into this year. You have the COVID test. You have all the COVID stuff going on throughout you, and you know the early morning testings. You know the locker room protocols. The list goes on. Stuff you guys had to deal with. How did you get accustomed to, and how did you deal with the past COVID year? Uh, I mean. I just looked at it as like, you know what? I'm blessed to be able to play the game that I love to play. So whatever I got to do to play it, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to just adapt to it. So like the whole mask thing, like I really did that early. I kind of worked out with my mentor a lot with a mask on. Like, like I told him, I was like, if you see it come down, like, like penalize me and like make me put it back up. Like mm-hmm. I trained myself for wearing, wearing that mask, you know, like being used to that. And then it was crazy. I still got back to the workouts. And it was still hard working out with the mask on, you know. But like other than that, like COVID tests, like yeah, like is it fun getting my brain touched three times a week? No, but you know, I, I had to do it. You know, I, I I never caught COVID. I never got COVID. And I'm blessed to say I do that. I never got COVID. You know, so I stayed out the way. Like me staying in the gym, me just focusing on myself, my game, and my like my work, like what I had to do really helped me with this COVID year. Like, I, uh, the COVID, honestly, me and the COVID year went hand in hand. Mm-hmm. You also make the transition to the Summit League this past year, and you end up winning Defensive Player of the Year, which obviously is a huge award on that. Take us to that day when you find out, though, they announced the awards. When did you learn of it, and what was your reaction to when you found out you were Defensive Player of the Year? So, Coach Don had called me in uh, the week of conference, and he brought me in. He was like, you know, I I wanted to tell you, you know, you you won Defensive Player of the Year, mm-hmm. and you made second team All Conference. And as much as I was excited about the Defensive Player of the Year, 
I was upset. I felt I, honestly, I felt disrespected that I made second team. I, I mean, I, I'm not, I no disrespect to the guys that made first team, and no disrespect to the guys that made second team with me. I just felt that like I had a first team all conference season. You know, like I averaged I averaged 17, 18 in conference, and I guarded the best player. I bet I guarded the best guard of every team every game. You know, like and the thing is, like I averaged seventeen on, and I tell people I, I, I averaged seventeen on le- on probably half the possessions that almost every other guard gets in D one basketball because we play a, we play a style that very low possession games grinded out like it's low scoring like you know you're not getting that like you're not getting like those high possession games with us you're not going to do that so like I'm always running like my scoring is always very just like it has to be efficient for what our game style is so like that that plus me guarding the best player in and out I just feel like I just feel like that was just not like what else would I need to do because I was top five in scoring I was top five in scoring I was number one in steals I was top five in uh like I was in multiple categories I was top five in, in I was top five in field goal percentage like I'm just straight shooting the, the ball I was shooting 50 percent from the field and I was top five in conference so I just I just felt like, you know, like, I was like, you know, what? Like, I understand, like, it was our first year. Maybe that's what it was. But, like, I'm not mad about it. I'm thankful for the things I did earn. I'm not disrespecting us at all. But that, that's just how I felt about it. But when I did get the, the text and the meeting, it was an exciting day. You know, I was, I was like, I was kind of antsy. I was couldn't wait to see, like, the like the social media posts and everything. You know, I was just, like, ready to see it. And, you know, I got the phone calls from my parents and everything. It was just a good day, you know. But then I knew that. I had a different chip on my shoulder now because now people ha- like are going to expect that great defense on me because you can't be a defensive player of the year and not play good defense. Absolutely. Well, I got a couple more questions to talk about your college career so far before we get in Florida and wrap this up. And one of those mm-hmm. is you look back at this career. Now you finished top 10 in multiple stat categories, top 10 steals, top 10 points and field goals plus minus like the list goes on. You go down as one of the better players to play at UMKC What's your thoughts on that? Like when you look back in these past four years, the two coaches, all the ups and downs, how would you kind of say your overall career was? I gave my heart to this school. That's how I look at it. Like this school took a chance on a two star from Ferguson, Missouri, who wasn't really recruited, you know, you know, didn't really show much, just had a shoulder surgery, didn't know how he was going to bounce back from the shoulder surgery, you know. It took a chance on me, you know, so I really gave my heart to the school and did everything I can on and off the court to just make this school a better school. You know, I, I owed that to them. You know, I owed everything that I gave on the court. Every every last drop of sweat that I dropped on the court, every last bucket that I put in, you know, I owed that to them. You know, that's how I looked at it. You know, I always have my, like, respects and my owing, and, like, I will always love this school, you know, like, and that's never going to change. But you know, like that's how I looked. That's how I looked at. It. Like I, I owed this to them. I gave, I gave my all to them. You know, I wanted to. I wanted to give my all to this school every year. Like I love this place. That's why I said, like, that's why I didn't leave after the first coaching change, because I love this place too much. I really had a like a heart tie. You look at all the games that you had, the career highs, every moment you've had, your best defensive outings. What would you personally say is your favorite game of your college career? My favorite game of my college career is probably my career high this year. When I'm against Omaha, twenty nine. Mm-hmm. That game was it was so it was it was fun. Not just because I scored many points, but one of my old teammates from my first team, Demarco Smith, who was my roommate my freshman year, who I'm really really close with to this day. He had transferred to Omaha, so it was just against them. So you know, like that plus me scoring twenty nine that game. You know, it was just a fun – and it was my first game back from my injury. I had a shoulder injury mm-hmm. uh, after the Oral Roberts week. <laughs> like, I had put my body on the line for that week, and I my shoulder was like – I could barely I could barely lift it to shoot the ball. So I set out that North Dakota week. So I came back the Omaha week, and I was just like – even my teammate could tell, like, you was like you were on one. Like, you were ready. Like, I was like – I was like ready to be back on the court. Like, I was like – like, I was just like – it was like I was like hungry. Like I was just ready. And then, you know, I just 
it got to a point where like I didn't even re- realize how much I was scoring. I was just like playing like mm-hmm. unconsciously. Like I really was just playing unconsciously. And I feel like that's when it was fun. Like I was really just enjoying myself. Like I was just like, I was just like, it felt like a rock in the ocean. And I was just like just scoring. It was just fun. But now, yeah, but that was probably one of my more remembered. I was probably a game that I always, you know, just remember. And, you know, it was probably one of my favorite outings or that game or I want to say the Oral Roberts game, the one one. That was a really fun game because we had because we had lost we had smoked it we should have beat them the first game, so coming back and win the second game at their place was big and it was a really fun game and it was really like heated and you know me versus Max you know, and then winning player of the week in the summit after that like that was a so, that's like those those two are up there. My last question about UMKC is out of all your teammates you had, who would you say is the funniest teammate? Frank came game by far, 100%. He's the funniest person I've ever made. So it made even better. I got him 24 7. Absolutely, man. Well, let's get into this Florida transition because this is where you're headed now, your final year of college basketball. We already discussed why you chose them, but kind of take us through this. So, like I said, you're going through a lot of different options. You have countless schools in your final running. Like, there's tons of schools reaching out to you. What led Florida to you? Like, why was Florida the school that separated them from every other school that was reaching out to you? Coach White, uh, tell everybody the same. Coach White was the separator. Coach, uh, it was uh, so I just got the phone with Kansas, mm-hmm. and Coach White called me. He was like, "Brand is this the defensive bringing defensive player of the year in the summer league?" Brand McKissick, like you know, like he's like making an intro, and I'm just like, "Yeah, it's me." You know, like this is Mike. He's like, "This is Mike White, head coach of Florida." Like for me, that off the rip, that spoke volume because the head coach called me. Like, like when you go through a recruiting process. You don't you, – you rarely get the head coach to reach out to you first. Yep. So, him reaching out to me, and he's like, look, like, I got a list of transfers. Like, you're at the top of my list. Like, I want you. I want you here. You know, like, you're my favorite player. Like, like, like he really let it be known that, like, he wanted me in his program, and he saw something in me that he could help. Like, he like, – like, you know, like, he, he just – he made it be known from the jump, and, you know, just going through that process with him. And the like the and really that's the relationship for Florida like 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 because like I always look at like relationships and it's just like who am I developing relations with at Florida? When I say Florida, I gotta say Coach White. And that's the head coach. Like you don't just say that over. You know, like you are you say you give it an assistant. You know, like I just feel like when it came Coach White and his staff is the staff that's gonna take care of me and you know put me in the best position for what I want to do in my career. You know, so. That's what really stood them apart, you know, and I really do. I really like Coach White a lot and what he's about, you know. So I'm just really excited, you know, get there and be with him and, you know, grind. There were a lot of days kind of leading up to your commitment. Then I know KU got a couple other additions to the team, but there are a lot of people saying that KU could be where you're going. A lot of people predicting KU as an option for you. Was that true? Like, was that something where you actually were close to ever going to and then Florida kind of came in? Or how close ever were you to really going to Kansas? I mean, KU is definitely a good uh, option. Like I was, I was really talking to KU, you know. I was really, I, 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 be honest, I was thinking about going to KU. You know, that were they were an option. You know, like they were. It was a good chance I was gonna go to KU because you know, KU is also a great opportunity for me. You know, in the high stage in the Big Twelve, you know, show showcase what I can do. And there's nothing that like you know additions that change change or what's they know. It's just like I didn't want to commit too fast you know and with those days that those extra days that i took you know it showed me it opened my eyes to other things Mm -hmm. they you know made some options better you know from that point on you know the rest is history obviously would you say ku was your second favorite school or was it someone else's number two for you um i want to say when it it really got done the the they were in a I can't say like a top two because I really didn't have like a top two. I really picked from mm. like a four or a I honestly just picked for my six. Honestly, I really just picked for my six. And I really, I kind of just, I was talking to all the schools and then one school just kind of just stuck out the most. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it wasn't really like I just dumped it down to two or three or I really just picked from the six. Like cause I was talking, I was talking to all those schools the uh, same amount of level, you know, and I was, 
getting that, you know, vibe from all six. And so, you know, I just took a couple extra days and, you know, commitments happen. And next thing you know, I mean, it showed me some things. This is, really, this is a special class, and I think so too, because Florida obviously was a team that made a, sec- a, a day two a performance and made it to the second round of the tournament. They did lose a ton of pieces, though. It's going to basically be a whole new look roster. Uh, I'm not sure the exact number, but there's, quite, there's, a, there's a handful of guys returning, but rest will be incoming in, freshmen, transfers. But so far, we have you. We have CJ, we have Myron, we have Flan. We have a few different guys already committed. How special is this team looking so far, though? Yeah, you already said a couple of names like Myron. Plan CJ like those like you look at like I was I was talking to this day and I'm like dog we just brought in two defensive player of the years with me and Plan come on now like you got Myron who can score you know you got mm-hmm. CJ who's just like an athletic big you know like he you know he showed himself in the ACC you know, like and then you got a uh, Kwasi he's six four lanky mm-hmm. like he's a good like, he's gonna be good. You know, and then you got like you say you don't have many coming back. You know, we got Tyree coming back. Mm-hmm. We got Rougie coming back. Uh, I mean, I think Collins gonna come back. You know, I think Collins gonna come back for sure. So you know, bringing him back with with the Ruji and CJ in our front court. Hopefully, we get another big out the at the portal because I think we're trying to get. I think we're looking at a. Uh, uh, I forgot his name. They sent to me today. I was supposed to, talk, I was supposed to reach out to him. I've been doing a lot of recruiting. I will say that. I'll be, I'll be trying to get good, sure. But, uh, no, nah, um, we're trying to get another big man. And then uh, we get another transfer at the portal, like another, like, four. And then because we got some other pieces, too, that, you know, like, like I said, you know, I feel like this can be a special group, you know, like, because, like, like, it's just like, we, we it's like we're not going to play defense. We got some guys now that's going to that's play defense. Like, like that's known for, you know, like, hey, like we're not going to play defense. Like, that's what that's one thing we're going to do. So I'm excited. I'm excited about this group a lot because it's not just like, you know, you look at some schools and they get guys just for scoring, you know. Like, Coach Mike got guys that can do both. Mm-hmm. Plan averaged 20 and was defensive player of the year. I averaged 17 the player of the year. Myron averaged 15 and he plays defense pretty well. And Tyree, he, like, he plays defense too and he averaged, what, 12, 13, like, he, Coach Mike got four guys as the guard and the guard core that can do both on any given that. Well, I'm not gonna say any given night because I'm gonna play defense every night. But it's just like on any given night, any of us can explode for points. You obviously, like you said, I was gonna ask you this too because not a lot of guys that are transferring in get to know practically the whole roster already. A lot of them are still learning names. Maybe you haven't talked to them, but you seem like you've already made some form of connection with everyone on the team to some degree. As well as, like you said, you're already recruiting guys, which is a rare thing, just coming in. Like, you're obviously going to kind of be one of the leaders of the team. You're going to be one of the older guys, not the oldest player on the team. How are you going to take on this? And what's it like kind of taking on this recruiting role, but also just really becoming the leader of a team? Well, uh, yeah, like I've already talked to a lot of guys. Like, I talked to Keontae too. Like, I forgot about you. I forget about Keontae. Like, I'm, like, I'm telling, like, like, if Keontae come back too, uh-huh. like, I, don't, like, I don't know what people are going to say then. So, like, <laughs> it's like, it's just like I've been talking about him, like, and I got looked at it the other day. Dang, I'm like, like it's only two seniors. It's me and Flan. Me and Flan are the only seniors on the team, you know, like Greg, older seniors. And I, I all my teams, I've been one of the younger in the class. Mm-hmm. So like, now I'm about to come in and be like one of the older guys, or be looked at like one of like the <laughs> old. It's gonna be different, you know. But like, I've always been a guy that like. I want people to get better every day because I know I'm going to get better every day. You know, it's so like if I see play, like if I see my teammates are struggling with something or they need anything, or they, have, I, I would always be the one that I, like, if you have a question or you want to just like insight or anything, like you can ask me and I'll be there. Like I, we can sit, like I just sat there, like with players on my team here and like I just sat in the gym with them and just like just like worked on aspects of the game that they need to do just to be good in the game for us. You know, like I sat there and more with one of my bigs. And we sat there and did pick and pops, pick and pop threes for like 30 minutes. I was just, I wasn't getting a shot up. I was really just passing the ball to him for pick and pop, rebound and do it again. Like the things like that, like I just want, I, when it comes to me, like me being a leader, like I, I, it's not just about me, it's about the team. Mm-hmm. You know, like you hear, you hear about players that don't make their team better. But like I want, I want to be one of the, I want to be, be looked at as one of those guys like, hey, he was a great player, mm-hmm. but, 
he was a great player, not only because of how he played, because he made the guys around him better too. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about your upcoming year, we know now it's your final year. This wasn't always something that came out because of the eligibility rule, but you have, like you said, you have one year to basically prove yourself, build your legacy out there at Florida. So what would, what can Florida Gator fans expect from you? Like, what would you bring to Florida? What's, what's the kind of the biggest thing, one or two, three things that you can kind of guarantee them that they'll, you'll produce for them every night? I think the first thing, first and foremost thing, I feel like I need to tell the Florida community that I'm going to bring a lot of energy and life. I'm a very, like, I'm, I, I'm, I have a great character to my play. So, like, I'm going to talk. I'm going to, like, I'm going to scream. I'm going to yell. Like, I'm going to be really excited. Like, I bring energy. Like, I, I you know, like, and, like, I, I feed off it. Like, I like getting my guys amped because then I feed off them being amped. You know, like, I feed off that. So, like, probably being in like a like a like a arena like that like if it was to have like full capacity like behind me like i couldn't even imagine how i'd play because i've never really had like a like a full packed house like arena like type feel mm -hmm. i've always been against it not with it you know so that's one thing but then like other than that like probably the second thing uh the most important thing is i'm gonna get my 110 to the swamp i'm like that's what like, like the Gator country's gonna get my 110. Like, I'm not holding anything back. Like, I'm going to the wheels fall off with this one. Like, it's my last year. You know, like, so I told my mom, I was like, you know, it's crazy. Like, I didn't even plan on doing the fifth year. Like, I've never thought about it. Like, when that, when we got the extra year back, I was still just planning on, I was like, I wanna have a good enough year to where I don't have to use my fifth year. That's what my goal was coming into this. I wanna have a good enough year to where I don't have to use it. That was really what I said. And now I'm using it. I'm just like, nah, I just smacked myself in the face, but you know. <laughs> it was just like, it was just like, it was, it was, it was crazy. Like, I was like, I'm really about to use my fifth year. And it was like something I really didn't even think about. So, you know, like now that I'm using it and now that I'm like, like, no, like there's no, I, I don't want to have the pain of regret. That's the one thing I always never want to look at. I never want to have the pain of regret. Like, why didn't I do that? You know, like, so they're going to get my 110. And then, I mean, there's a third thing, you know, like, like I'm a people person. You know, like, I, I, you know, like, it, like the community out there has shown so much love to me already. And I haven't even gone out there, you know, it's like, I, I'm the type of guy, you know, you show love to me, I'm going to show love back, you know. So, like, I'm already so appreciative of uh, Gator Country, you know, mm -hmm. like, I really do appreciate them already, not even being down there yet. And like, I talk about them. That's the first thing I talk to them, to recruits about, like, when they want, like, like I'm like, dude, like, if you, like, you come here like you got like an army of people that's gonna have your back and support you. Like they come in, they're so dedicated. Like it was, it, it's crazy. Like they're like they're such a great fan base, and it's just amazing. So you know, like I'm, I, I, I am a like a people person to an extent. You know, I will give back. You know, I, you know, I do care about my community. So if you could sum up all those things right now and put it into one word, like what's one word that's going to put together the entire brand McKissick definition, like all the whole package of you, what's the one word that's going to describe you? Emac. That's just, that's just, that's just me. That's just, that's just who I am. Ain't, ain't no really English dictionary word that can really describe me. That's just, it's just BMAC. That's who BMAC is. That's my, that's, that's who I'm like, that's my nickname that, like, like that's, like, it's funny, like, people say, I, that's my nickname, but, like, that's really, like, my name. Like, no one really knows my name is Brandon, unless they really just want to go into a roster. Everyone knows me as BMAC. So, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the only way I can describe myself as BMAC, because there ain't no really English dictionary word to it, you know? That guy get a trademark sooner or later. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, my final, well, one, one thing I was, like, wrapping up this is building a legacy for yourself and that's something that all guys ultimately want to do for them so we know your final chapter now but ultimately though at the end of the day when you are done playing this game of basketball what do you want to be remembered for for what you achieve both on and off the court on the court you know i want to be remember as a dog like when they be like oh that was like like brandon because that was a dog that was up on both sides of the ball that's why i, I that's all i remember but i i should be like like i want to be like, oh he was just like just not just defense, not just offense. I want to be both because I focus on both. I take time to work on both. So I would like to be respected for both when I get done with this time. So he's a dog on offense and defense. But, you know, off the court, you know, I want to be remembered as one of those guys that, like, 
he wasn't a kid that like let things get to his head or he was a Hollywood type of kid or he didn't care about the people around him. Like, no, nah, it's not me. Like my family, my community, my teammates, like I go, I go hard for them off the court, on the court. Like, like I, I like if you need some for me, I got you. Like, like if you want to do this, let's do it. Like, mm-hmm. like, I'm not one of those guys that's just like, you know, like sees the big, uh, big fame and lights and everything and like changes, you know, like I'm still like just that like kid from Ferguson that, you know, that uh, had to get, had to just really just make a name for himself. You know, like I'm not, like not that one of the Hollywood people, you know, I'm just a down to earth kid every year about the people who care about him. Absolutely. And then my final thing for you, Give Florida Nation your three biggest goals you have set for your one year there. Uh, Florida Nation, I want to first and foremost make a great run in the tournament this year. We got to get there first. So the second thing is having a great SEC season. And uh, the third thing would be to bring Gator Nation a lot of just joy, happiness, and entertainment with our play. Absolutely, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on today, man, and here's what I got next for you, man. Thank you so much. Anytime, man. Y'all welcome on, man. God bless.